It says this. He said, there's one thing, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant about. He could have listed a hundred things. But he said, there's only one thing I don't want you ignorant about. And he said this. A day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is a what? One day. So watch this. From Adam to Christ was four of God's days or four thousand years. Because a day is a thousand, a thousand is a day. From Christ to today, let me help you. Y'all remember 1999 when all the doom and gloom people hit Christian television again? Y'all remember that? And here's what they all declared. And man, they were selling books. They had tapes and videos. Here's what they were saying. Even the media jumped on it. And they were calling it Y2 K. And here's what they say. Planes going to fall out of the sky. The grid, the electric grid is going to just stop. You're not going to get money out of your banks anymore. It's going to be the end of the world again. Because the computer system, they said, of that day, could not recognize a zero. So they said it's the end of the world again. And they told everybody to start preparing. Well, all the doom and gloom gurus on TPN start preaching. Because fear sells. And man, they were telling people, go buy generators. Go buy water. Jim Baker came on. He was selling NASA food. And I was pastoring in Scottsdale, Arizona, Phoenix at the time. Had a great church. Multicultural church, hosting TV in, great music. And I remember, you know, some of my people, they started saying, Pastor, what, what, what about all this? And I said, you know what, I don't know, but I'm going to go talk to God. He said, all right. So I spent time with God that week. This was the week right before January 1, 2000. Uh -huh. And you know, how many of you know if you'll talk to God, He'll talk to you? Yes, the yes. Bible said, the Holy Spirit tells us he, we should know all things to come because He already does. Uh -huh. If we just spend time with Him, we shouldn't be caught off guard. That's right. So I said, God, you need to talk to me because the media is saying one thing, Christian television is saying one thing, but I, never, I want to know what you say. And I'll never forget this, but I'm sitting in my house and the Lord said, about that Y2K thing. I said, yes, sir. He said, they're calling it Y2K as again the end of the world. I said, yes, sir. He said, nothing that they're saying is going to happen because it's not in here. And then this is what he said to me, man of God. He said, son, what's the initials? I said, Y. Okay. He said, the first fruits of the third day will begin January 1, 2000, and the world is going to begin to say yes to the kingdom. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I said, glory be to God. So I told my church on that Wednesday night, I said, look, don't raise your hand. Take this generator back to Home Depot. <laughs> food back to Jim Baker because he's going to need it. And guess what? It came and it went and nothing happened. Amen. So then all the end time guru mathematicians have to come up with a reason why. Yeah. See, I, I got a book in my library. I saved it as a classic because I bought it in 1987. And the title of the book was 88 Reasons Why the Lord is Coming Back in 1988. Uh -huh. <laughs> I bought the book, read it. Guess what, church? Unless I'm confused, it's 2017. And he didn't come back in 88. So the guy wrote a sequel, like come movies. Come on. All right, then. Because he made a lot of money off 88. Yes, so he said... His math was off. No, his yeah. mind was off. <laughs> and he wrote 89 reasons why the Lord's coming back in 89. Didn't happen. Now, can I help you? Oh, God help me. I'm going to kick over a sacred cow right now. Okay. I grew up from a child. I got born again when I was eight years old in a revival when my daddy was preaching. 
as far back as I can remember, I've heard all my life, he's coming back any second. Yeah. And here's how the old folk preached it. If you mess it up, when he comes back, if you sneeze wrong, if someone pulls out in front of you and you flip them off, you're going to hell when he comes back. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Come on. And so I lived in fear all my life. Yeah. Yes. And so what happened is we've had decades of people living in a any minute. So their bags have been packed and they're not doing kingdom work. Jesus said, occupy till I come. In the Greek it means be busy with my father's business. <laughs> and then you think people, apostle, would read their Bible. <laughs> because are you ready for this, saints? Pastor, you already know this. <laughs> Jesus, the Son of the living God, the second person of the Trinity, does not know when God's going to sit there. That's right. Yes. You think folk would read their Bible? The Bible said only the Father knows. So, if Jesus don't know, John Hagee don't know. I'm sorry. Yes. They don't know. But they're making money off our ignorance. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Uh -oh. Jesus. If your bags are packed, just look straight ahead. Nobody know I'm talking to you. Go home tonight and unpack them and put your hand to the work of the, plan, of the kingdom of God. So January 1, 2000, began the first fruits of the third day or the third 1,000 years from Christ. Mm -hmm. And then I love this. I love biblical numerics and math. The number 1,000 in the Bible, brother, represents, and you all say it tonight, 1,000 represents glory. Yes. So wait, wait, wait. I, I'm going to help you. The first day from Christ, the first 1,000 years, mm -hmm. the first level of glory was sanctification oh come on now the second day from christ the second level of glory was justification yeah. justification yeah. sanctification gotta go yeah, yeah. and wait a minute now wait a minute we're in the first fruits of the third day of the third 1000 years we're in the season of glorification yeah. Yeah. where we've been singing and prophesying and declaring guess what it's here yeah. Yeah. it's not out there it's in me and it's in you and he's waiting to release it So then watch this story prophetically. Three days into a celebration that's supposed to be a week, they run out of wine. So hold your finger there real quick and go back to the Old Testament prophet of Hosea. I've got to show you something. Hosea chapter 6. You all just get ready. I'm setting you up. I'm high tech now. You got one too, brother. Huh? See, I still bring my Bible up for the old folks. Because if I didn't bring they'd think something was wrong. Where's your Bible, man? Well, it's in here. But, well, no, I got to see it. It's right up there. Now, I want you to see this, and you're going to look at it different if you now understand a day with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years is a day. The Old Testament prophet Hosea, look what he said, chapter 6, verse 1. Come. And let us return unto the Lord. Whoa, well, stop. Notice it didn't say the Lord went anywhere. Mm -hmm. It said the people left. Yeah. Come on. And he said, the prophet said, it's time for us to come home. Now listen to what he said. Come and let us return unto the Lord. Watch this. Look what it said. For he had torn, and he will heal us. He has smitten, and he will bind us up. Now look at verse 2. After two days he will revive us watch this church through the 80s and 90s at the end of the second day from Christ pockets of revival started hitting the whole world Pensacola Toronto Kansas City 
different places. Many places started experiencing pockets of what? Revival. Now here's what you and I understand. We put up with some things and we've heard them talk so long, we believe them even though they're not true. Can I tell you this? I grew up in church. We had revivals every year. And here's what revival was. We brought in a flashy dressed evangelist who got up and he, watched this, he preached salvation messages to save folks. And we called it revival. No. That's evangelism. The world doesn't experience revival. The church experiences revival. They, re they receive conversion. But it's the church who meets revival. All right. So at the end of two days, God said through the prophet, I'm going to begin to revival my people. Because many of them grow weary and discouraged and things are going on in their life and they need a new breath. Yes. So revival started here. All right. But wait a minute. It was just preparation for something. Come on, come on. Because look at this. After two days, he will revive us. Oh, watch, watch, watch. And in the third day. What day are we in church? What day are we in church? We're in the third day for Christ. And in the third day, watch this. He's going to raise us up. What does that mean? You've been at a level down here during the second day. But I've got a place I've been preparing for you. And I'm going to call you up a little higher in that day. I'm going to raise you up. King James said, and we'll live in a sight. Watch this. Look what it doesn't say. He didn't say in the third day, you'll visit my presence on Sunday during corporate worship. He said in the third day, you're going to live in my presence. That word live in his sight in the Hebrew means this. You're going to live in my presence because you're going to manifest my character. What's in us finally has matured to the point where they're not long. Listen, we decreased and he's increased. Yes. Now it's all about him and not about us. 